Amen. Let's uh, begin our service. Uh, we're going to sing the second song, uh, Jackie. Uh, for all that you've done, I would thank you. The first one was very new. And Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands and begin to come before God. Heart of worship and praise for all that you've done. Hallelujah. All that you've done, I will thank you for all that you're going to do. For all that you promise and all that you are, I know that He carried me through. Jesus, I thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord, and I thank you, hallelujah, and I thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you, hallelujah, thank you for loving and setting To do for all that you promise and all that you are, I know that He carried me through. Jesus, I thank you, and I thank you. setting me free thank you for giving your life best for me how I thank you Jesus I thank you gratefully thank you and I thank Thank you, hallelujah. Thank you for loving and setting me free. Thank you for giving your life just for me. How oh, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. We worship you tonight, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything that you have done for us tonight, dear God. Hallelujah. Shiki anda kara ba 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 Yeah, Lord, we we'll worship you. Amen. I'm going to sing this song when I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness. Hallelujah. Tonight, Can you help find a song? 
Let's sing Amen this song. When I look into you, when I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surrounds me become shadows in the light of you. When I find the joy of reaching your heart When my will becomes enthroned in your love When all things that surround me become shadows in the light of you I worship you I worship you The reason I live Is to worship you I worship you I worship you The reason I live Is to worship you When I look into your holiness When I gaze into your love when all things that surround me become shadows in the light of you, when I found the joy of reaching your heart, when my will becomes thrown in your love, when all things that Surrounds me, come shadows in the light of you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship. You, I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. I worship you I worship you oh, oh, oh. The reason I live Is to worship you The reason I live, hallelujah The reason I live to worship you yes Lord we worship you tonight we praise you Lord God Almighty Shikianda Rabba Baba Baba Sunday Ida Rabba Korobo Sanda Rabba Baba Baba Korobo Sunday we glorify your name tonight hallelujah Sikianda Sanda Hallelujah. Father, as we stand before you this wonderful night, we want to bring all our leaders before you in the fellowship. Pastor Joe Campbell, Pastor Great Mitchell, Pastor Ellen Asia, and all the pastors and their family represented in this nation of ours, Lord God Almighty. 
And all oh God, that you will set your age around each and every one of us as we serve you, Lord. In these last days that we are living in, Lord, we pray for your holy guidance, O oh Lord, for your anointing, God Almighty, for your presence among us this evening. In the name of Jesus, we even pray, God, for our loved ones who are not saved. We bring them all before you, Lord. God, they are too precious for you as well. And in your name, Lord, we surrender their lives, their hearts unto you. O oh God, open the eyes of their heart, Lord, that they may know you and know the truth. The truth will set them free. Even tonight, dear God, in heaven, we bring those who are in need of your help, need of your touch, need of healing, need of deliverance, need of, O oh Lord, soundness of mind, Lord, need, O oh Lord, God, a breakthrough in their life. Lord, we pray and surrender all of them before you, even the new place that, God, we're going to move to, O oh Lord, a place of our own, Lord Almighty. God, we surrender all that is to be done before you and unto you in the month of March and April. Hallelujah. God, we ask of you to bless, O oh Lord God, everything that we put our hands upon, O oh God Almighty. Even tonight, Lord God, we pray for this service. We pray, speak to our hearts. Guide us, God, through your word. Your word is our foundation, God. A lamb unto our feet and a light unto our path. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you tonight and pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can be seated. And um, let's turn to the book of Titus tonight. The book of Titus. Chapter 1. And let's um, bow our heads as well as we receive our giving. Our Father, bless every giver. Tonight in this place is the gift to you of their offerings and tithes. In the name of Jesus Christ, this uh, wonderful night we pray. Amen. So we're going to turn to the book of Titus, chapter 1, verse number 7, and verse number 8. For a bishop must be blameless, is a steward of God, not self-will, not quick temper, not given to wine, not violence, not greedy for money, but hospitable, a lover of what is good, sober-minded, just, holy, self-control, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and convict those who contradict. Was aid, hospitable, a lover of what is good. Uh, tonight's title message is uh, Be a Lover of What is Good. And uh, one of the, you can say, frightening uh, words from Jesus about what many can become and what many will become or shall become is found in the book of Matthew 24. And Matthew 24 is about uh, the end of days, the last days. And one of the things about the heart of many people is that the love that they have in them uh, will instead will become or will grow cold. Jesus says there in Matthew chapter 24 verse 12, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. New King James Version put it this way, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. The love of many or the love of most will grow cold. It's not in the sense of physical ice coldness, 
but rather cold in the sense of becoming inactive, becoming uh, passive, uh, begin to have no feeling in it at all. Which can be a scary thought because to a believer, uh, without an ongoing growing love, uh, it can be fatal. It can be uh, dangerous uh, in our relationship or in our spiritual relationship with God. Matthew 12, 30, 31 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. But yet Jesus says tonight that in the very last days, because of wickedness, because of the increase of um, uh, lawlessness, a love that is full of love and full of fire can instead grow to become coal. Um, just was reading about the incidents that took place in America whereby five uh, uh, black American policemen and I think you all read the news about this five American black policemen and they beat up one of their own black American people to, to death. This is, a, this is a horrible kind of thought that, that, you know, the police whom is supposed to protect people are instead, uh, they are found to have uh, killed uh, one of them and um, one of the citizens and not only one of the citizens their own. So you can imagine the weakness of the heart of people. And when this began to happen, Jesus says to us tonight that because of all this that are happening, that are taking place, um, the heart or the heart, love heart of people can be instead grow cold. Okay. Now, in our text here tonight, uh, the book of Titus says that among the many must have ingredient. Those speaking to those who are in ministry, but it's also speaking to all of us this evening that is the ingredient that one must have is an ingredient of love. That is, the person must be a lover of what is good. In verse 8 again, Titus chapter 1, rather he must be hospitable. One who loves what is good. Okay. In another version, but hospitable, a lover of what is good sober-minded, just, holy, self-control. So among the uh, qualities of one who is a servant of God or one who, who is a believer, one of it is that he or she must be a lover of what is good, which leads us this morning to the question or this evening to the question, or what does it mean to be a lover of what is good? Okay. So firstly, it means that you are a believer in good, or you believe in good. When the weather or the spiritual weather does not look bright or shining, when the sea you are in is rough and choppy, when evil seems to be uh, stronger in color than the color of good, you still believe in the act of good. You still believe in the doing of good. You still believe in the outcome of good. Okay, you still walk in good. Good will not leave you. 
but still remain with you whatever spiritual weather or whether whatever kind of uh, a thing you're going through or whatever is before you that is happening whatever wickedness is taking place among you uh, abounding or before you good will not leave you you still have a pocket full of good in you okay to give away okay to share even though you yourself may not be shown good you still find it in your heart to forgive even though you have been used you still would not stop being kind even if your kindness is rewarded with unkindness and whether you are on top of the mountain or down the valley you still have good in you to give or to share Okay. Lovers of what is good Believe in good In season and out of season Forgive me, okay This guy keep calling me okay. So Lovers of what is good Is someone who believe in good In season And out of season Secondly, the second thing about those who are lovers of what is good is that they look for good. Okay. They look for good. There's this story about the boy waking up to find that under the Christmas tree that he... Uh, he uh, off it. So this story about this boy waking up to the Christmas tree, hoping to find what you call a presence underneath the tree, and instead found a pile of horse manure. Okay. And without wasting any time, uh, he took a shower and began to dig on the manure and shower away all the manure and says, with so much manure, okay, kaka, there must be a pony inside. There must be a horse inside with such uh, amount of uh, manure over it. There must be a small horse inside there. Lovers of that which is good look for good. Instead of looking for the worst, especially in people, okay, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, put it this way. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is any worthy of praise, think about these things. Okay? It's put this way. Is telling you to look for the true, to look for the honorable, the just, the pure. Think about these things. Look for that which is good. Uh, interesting thing about when Judas came to betray Jesus. Okay, Jesus did not call him a betrayer. Jesus calls him a friend. Friend, what are you here to do? Okay. Jesus did not call him a betrayer, but rather call him a friend. Jesus still sees something in this man. Though he betrayed, but Jesus refers him to, a, to as a friend. So someone who is a lover of what is good is someone that looks for good. He can look for the bad in a person. And it's so easy to look for the bad in a person. Okay? And, and uh, you find that the flesh and the devil will try to instigate you to always find the, the worst in a person instead of trying to look for the good in a person. Okay? But um, the scripture says to us tonight in Titus, 
uh, a man of God, someone who is a believer, is someone, is a lover of that which is good. Another thing about lovers of what is good is that they are doers of good. Okay. Especially those who are of the household of faith. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10 As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto who are of the household of faith. Household of faith means brothers and sisters okay, in Christ, especially especially to the household of faith, those who are among us, we are called to do good unto them who are of the household of faith. Titus begin to continue to talk about uh, this word good in verse 7 of chapter 2. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Okay. Show yourself in all things. Show yourself a pattern of good works. There's a pattern in you. The pattern of good works. People see you. People see good works out from you. Okay. Second uh, chapter 2, 13 and 14, Titus again. He says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearance of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all sin, purify and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. They are zealous of good works. Now, we know we are not saved by good works. Okay, we are saved by grace through faith. But after our salvation, we begin to express. Our life begins to show forth good works. Again, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Chapter 3, again, verse 8 of Titus, he continued to talk about good works. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will thou, uh, that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Again, verse 14, chapter 3 of Titus. And let also, let's also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses. They may not be fruitful. Now, with this, I bring this to an end with these words. A lover of that which is good love to see good done. Okay? And love to be involved in doing good. Okay? So a lover of what is good is someone who love to see good done. Do you have that in you? You love to see good been done. And not only you love to see good being done, you also are involved in doing good. Story of the Shumanite woman in the Bible. Okay, we know the story about her. She see this man of God always passing through, and one day he she began to tell her husband, "I'm gonna let's build a small little room." So that this man of God, whenever he passes by, he can stay in that room. Put a bed there, put a table there, put a lamb there. The story of the four friends, of the man who is paralyzed. It took time to bring uh, this friend of them to Jesus. 
the story of the good Samaritan man okay, who stopped for this for this man who has been beaten, robbed in the, on the road to Jericho. He's called a good Samaritan. Okay. The story told by Jesus about those who are sick, in prison, thirsty and hungry. And Jesus says, you have, as you do this to this, you have done that to me. Okay. You love to see people thirst quench when they are thirsty. You love to see people uh, smile and prayed for. When they are hungry, you, you want to see them being fed. Your heart's desire is that you like to see and you want to see good being done. Okay? And more than that, you involve yourself in doing good. And the scripture says tonight to us in Titus verse 8, a lover of what is good is one of the ingredients uh, found in a man and a woman of God. Amen. Let's bow his tonight. And Father, in this very short message, in regard to this topic of a lover of what is good, I pray tonight that God in this short message that you will begin to help us to be fruitful in this very area. Even as the book of Titus keep on speaking about being fruitful in good works. Or let our life this evening be found doing this very thing. God, we ask all this, God, tonight in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask and pray. Amen. God bless all of you. Amen.